when I discovered that, that other people do that, my laundry experience in Japan got so much better. <laughs> Hello guys, my name is Wukash and I'm making YouTube videos about Japan and my experience of living there for 10 months. I was there on working holiday visa in a small town called Maebashi in Gunma Prefecture, Kanto region. And if you're interested in this kind of stuff, please keep watching and subscribe for more. So today I would like to share with you my experience. How was it exactly, how it looked and what are my impressions about living there for 10 months. As many of you, before I came to Japan, I had a lot of expectations about that country and some of them were true and some of them weren't. So today I would like to share with you guys what are five things I learned about this country uh, while I was living there. Also, I'd like to share my general experience of living there and uh, talking with and being around Japanese people. The first thing I want to mention is how much Japanese you actually need to be in Japan, to actually survive in Japan. And surprisingly, it's not a lot. If you are there only for touristic reasons, then you're probably just fine with some popular expressions, common expressions, which you can just uh, look up online. However, if you are going to stay there for working holiday visa like me, you're probably gonna need some better understanding of Japanese. For example, doing groceries requires very little to know Japanese at all. Uh, if you are fine with occasional accidents when you bought something you didn't want to. On the other hand, going to a hairdresser is uh, much more difficult, in my opinion, because explaining your desired haircut uh, is quite tricky in Japanese and uh, you must consider also that Japanese people have different hairstyles and usually hairdressers tend to do their haircut in their style. When going to places like post office uh, you will need more Japanese. And remember that I'm speaking from a perspective of someone who was living in a smaller town, not in Tokyo. So there weren't, uh, there weren't many English speaking uh, staff, to be honest. So when you need to send something or when you need to visit a town hall, for example, you must be prepared to talk in Japanese only. And uh, actually, maybe not the talking part is that difficult, but reading part is difficult and writing because uh, there is a lot of paperwork in Japan. You must have uh, heard that already, but yes, I confirm it. There is a lot of paperwork in Japan and you need to fill a lot of paperwork. You must be able to at least write in hiragana and katakana and maybe some kanji. And of course, read them too, because you will need to fill that paperwork to, uh, for example, register in your hometown after you arrived in Japan. And constantly reading those Japanese signs and uh, things on the street, billboards, actually forced me to constantly double check my kanjis uh, in dictionary. And it's really good for practice. It's really good for uh, studying Japanese language. So your Japanese will certainly improve after getting there. And then again, if you are there only for touristic reasons, I think you will be fine. You have nothing to worry about us. For example, on trains, there are English signs, there are English announcements as well. So you can find your way uh, out of the subway station. Uh, well, maybe in Tokyo is more difficult than in other areas, but I think you'll be fine. By the way, using Google Maps is okay. However, there is a better app which I recommend, which is called Norikae Annai. It comes from Yahoo. And I think this app will improve your uh, train experience in Japan by tenfold. So please check it out. And I think that brings me to transport in Japan, which I think it's really convenient and well done. Trains especially are amazing, which probably you know already from other videos around the internet. And they are really reliable and you can expect them to arrive on time and depart on time. And besides that, the train network is really vast, so you can just ride anywhere to anywhere in Japan, to be honest. 
And yeah, you can get to a lot of places in Japan just by train, but remember to use some kind of app to get you there, because without that probably you will be lost. And don't ride taxi in Japan unless you are really rich. <laughs> Uh, and even for rich people, I think it's a bit uh, too expensive. So yeah, taxis only in emergencies, like you ha don't have any umbrella and it's raining like hell and you need to get somewhere quickly. So, And of course, besides buses and taxis and trains, you can also ride a bicycle if you have one. And this is actually the cheapest option, of course. And it's actually quite convenient too. In Japan, there are a lot of places adapted for bicycles and this is really convenient to just sometimes just ride a bicycle to the station when it's nice weather and not worry about those expensive buses. And of course, I need to mention cars and they are perfect for traveling with friends because you can split the cost uh, between everyone of gasoline and road tolls and actually road tolls in Japan uh, for highways are quite expensive so if you are traveling alone with a rented car then that could be really costly however if you have a group of friends like we did when we were traveling from Maebashi to Nagano prefecture to that mo monkey park we traveled with a group of friends and we split the cost between each other and it was actually quite affordable to travel there, by, uh, travel there by car. Okay, the next thing, and I was already prepared for it and probably you know it too, but apartments are really small. I mean, like really small. And that was really shocking for me. I mean, I was prepared for that, but even though I was prepared for it, I was shocked when I first came into the into my apartment in Maebashi and it was quite small, it was 20 square meters. On paper it looks like, well, it's enough, but uh, in the reality actually it was quite small, but it was lovely and actually later on when I got used to it, I felt it's actually enough for me. But the first impression, yeah, quite small. And the second thing that was um, really interesting for me in that apartment was uh, a bathroom. And it felt like it was put into that apartment by crane, uh, like a single unit. And everything was sealed. So the benefit of that is that actually you can take a shower on the floor uh, and you don't need to worry about spilling uh, anything on the other uh, parts of the apartment and you don't need to worry about um, flooding your neighbor underneath you. Also, what I had to keep in mind while I was living there is that those walls were really thin and they definitely weren't soundproofed. So I could easily hear what my neighbors were saying to each other and they probably heard what I was saying to other people in my apartment. So definitely you cannot have secret, secret uh, arguments. And of course, when you are throwing a party, definitely they will hear your music. And if they don't like it, then you will probably have some problem, problems with them. The thing that really annoyed me about that apartment uh, is how easily the breakers would go off when I plucked too many things at the same time. And too many things actually is uh, turned on air conditioning boiling water for a tea and heating something in a microwave and that's it and the apartment is black so yeah you need to be careful how many things you have plucked at the same time in your apartment definitely if you are playing some games on playstation like i was and somebody wants to make a tea and the air conditioning is uh, turned on at the same time. You need to frequently save your game because you may have some annoying moments later on. Cooking in this kind of apartment is actually really tricky because you only get one stove and very little space for cutting and pre food preparation. And definitely you cannot uh, boil water for pasta while it's uh, making meat on the other pan. 
uh, you get only one pot at a time. So yeah, making more complicated dishes is uh, difficult. However, if you are planning only on uh, making breakfast for yourself, then you will be fine because probably you will only need a pan for eggs or something like that. However, I heard from my friend that he doesn't even get that space for food preparation. So he cuts his food on tr his trash bin because the trash bin has flat lid and it's a perfect place for him to cut his uh, food for meals. So be careful about that when uh, searching for apartment. Take a closer look at the kitchen because you may be surprised after you uh, first arrive in that apartment. So if you are a good cook, you will probably be fine with that kitchen. However, for most people, dining out probably will be the, the option, the way to go when living in Japan. The thing that really surprised me in that apartment was that the laundry machine, the washing machine was outside on the balcony and uh, yeah, it was strange. And the laundry machine uses only cold water, so it won't remove any hardy stains from your clothes. However, it will keep them in good shape for a long time because hot water apparently is bad for your clothes, so yeah. Unfortunately, not every apartment gets a laundry machine, so if you are in this kind of situation, you can always use a laundromat, and I think the biggest problem is uh, finding one nearest to your apartment. But that won't be too difficult, I think, because there are plenty of those in Japan. While we at laundry, do yourself a favor and buy a lot of hangers, because the nice thing to do is to put your clothes on hangers and hangers on those strings. Then by doing that, you have a lot of space for other stuff to hang. And that's really, when I discovered that, that other people do that, uh, my laundry experience in Japan got so much better. <laughs> Guys, this is uh, all time I had today to make that video but please stick around for part two. I will be posting that shortly, so stick around and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.